are getting really excited for our upcoming 12th annual interdisciplinary integration symposium. And I wanted to take a moment to sit down with Ron and just have him outline a little bit of kind of why this topic, why this year, um, and kind of highlight a little bit about what each of these seven speakers are going to address during this annual symposium. Okay. Well, I also am getting excited about this. You know, this is something that I've been looking forward to for years, Jen, as you know. I, I, we always sit down and discuss, uh, you know, what's, what's, what's the topic going to be next year? And sometimes these topics are like planned out two or three years in advance. Yes. This one has been planned out. I can't tell you how many exact years, but for a very, very long time. And I really encourage you to to look at our brochure, get on our website, uh, um, and read about what the not the necessarily the objectives are, but the description of it. You know, the description of of each uh, speaker that's coming. We have we have I think what seven? seven seven speakers coming, and every single one of them I could spend seven to ten minutes on. Um, and it would be way too long of a discussion with you this afternoon. But I'm encouraging you to remember that the the real re reason why we're doing this is because of my sincere interest in pulling people like this together to talk about something that really I think is very, very important for all of us to, con to consider. If you think that this is just about Parkinson's, it's not. It's about this extrapyramidal system. And I, I pulled this up. You know, the extrapyramidal system is our system that's responsible for all of our our movement and our function for locomotion and 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 cortical spinal you know contribution on how we move and take information in and how we distribute it out through the midbrain. Uh, you know we're going to talk a lot about things like dystonia and you know dyskinesia and you know tremors and tension and uh, anything that has to do with uh, anything that has to do with uh, tightness and tension as a result of this midbrain reticular formation site in our in our system is going to be discussed by people who are both clinicians and researchers we've got both uh, we also got a very strong presence of people that uh, deal with uh, individuals who need assistance clinically and they they are these some of these people are working daily as we speak right now with clients that are coming in for activities that are really have really helped them uh, I would like to think that this bandwidth of information is, is about as good as you're going to find in any Michael Fox uh, program that you watch or anybody. I've gone to a few, actually, mm -hmm. courses on Parkinson's. And, and and not only Parkinson's, but these issues that are associated with hyper, hypertonicity and, and what they do with it with deep brain stimulation, some of the medications, some of the approaches that they use. Some are, effect, some are effective and some are not. So... I, I encourage you to take a minute and read about this uh, read about this uh, uh, interdisciplinary approach. A couple comments that I, I want to make sure I get out here, Jen. Jennifer Smart and I have been working together now for over, I want to say two, two and a half, three years now on this on this symposium. I just saw her this weekend. Uh, she is an absolute gift. She's going to present information on what she does, an overview of research, how it relates to what she does. She's very scientific minded. She's helped me a lot with evidence-based material. I'm going to present activities that I believe you'll be interested in when it comes to an overview of how they are these these individuals relate to what we know, do with our other patients. What's the what's the tie-in? I honestly believe, Jen, that a significant amount of our today patients who have not been diagnosed with Parkinson's or with dystonia really have underlying elements of it, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they don't know how to oscillate and they don't know how to resonate, which we'll get into. Uh, we have some dance specialists coming. We've got, we've got, we've got a, 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 a strong emphasis on placed on music and rhythm. Uh, Dr. Hinden's going to be here to talk about the oral airway and how it relates to resonance and how he, what he does with splint therapy with, you know, um, dystonic activities of the head, neck, and face. Uh, I look at Larry and I smile. Maybe I'll let you talk a little bit about Larry and the other yeah. speakers. Yeah, so um, Larry's a, a personal trainer, um, but his background is he is a retired police officer uh, who had to retire early because of Parkinson's um, disease. And he has taken that um, motto that Parkinson's is not going to have him. He has it. Um, he had a, a really bad fall accident um, that resulted in a brain injury as well. Um, but he's bounced back from that. He has a, a movement disorders and education uh, facility that he has in Maryland where 
he is actually studying constantly uh, with personal training, certified exercise specialist, um, rock steady boxing on ways to help people like him um, because he just wants to be a serve. You know, he wants to serve and to help others and to help people understand um, this process a little bit better. And then Christy Rose Fulmer is going to be here from rock steady boxing. Mm -hmm. And she's one mm -hmm. of, um, I believe the founders or, yeah. um, of rock steady boxing. Yeah. And she's going to be here talking about how rock steady boxing and why it works and how it's so effective with people with dystonia and Parkinson's and movement disorders and that importance of the alternating reciprocal punching, reaching, um, activity that's going on, not just with the upper extremities, mm -hmm. but through the ground and the floor with the lower extremities at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. So I would agree with Ron that this year we probably have the most probably diverse um, speaker lineup that we've had. So whether you're a personal trainer, an athletic trainer, a strength conditioning specialist, a physical therapist, a dentist, um, a chiropractor, this course can really be applicable in so many ways. Yeah. And, and like Ron said, even though maybe – Maybe you've seen one person or two people with Parkinson's yeah. disease in your caseload um, or clinically, you know, I think a lot of people are displaying early onset kind of symptoms that people aren't even picking up on. Medical right. professionals right. aren't picking up on. Right. Performance right. Uh, specialists aren't picking up on. Personal trainers, they may be picking up on them before anyone else. I can't. Um, yeah. And so just getting the exposure out there of what to look for and how we can influence that uh, with you know, some of Ron's background with the PRI approach and working with Jennifer and then these other disciplines on how their, um, what they are doing are effective with, with these types of patients and clients and athletes right. as well. The applicability of something like this, Jen, is so far reaching. I can't imagine anybody who's listening to this has not worked with somebody with, you know, uh, uh, some sort of tremor, bradykinesia, dyskinesia. I mean, we see so many little instance, instances where someone's not capable of regulating their tension, their tone, and results in shaking. These are all indicators that your uh, extrapyramidal system is struggling with, with both uh, sorting things out, if you will, and, with, and, and then also what uh, programs uh, can facilitate a, f um, a more movement disorder based on what may be not being used or applied to help these people live with it and actually turn it around. So I, I get excited about it. I just don't want you to think that that this is for those people doing rehab on people that have been diagnosed with tardive dyskinesia or, you know, uh, uh, disorders that have actually been uh, diagnosed. labels diagnosed like Tourette syndrome. Uh, you don't have to have a label. This is going to have this is going to have an impact on anybody who comes who's dealing with any type of festination, decision-making, stop-start activity, tremor-like activity, dyskinetic activity, um, bradykinesia, any of those syndromes that you see. Some of those syndromes are very prevalent and haven't even been diagnosed or given a, given a diagnosis. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this. We have a good lineup. Uh, I really encourage you to take a look at the date, take a look at our brochure, take a look at our website, read about each one of these individuals. I'm going to ask Jen to comment a couple more minutes on our anniversary date that also is gonna, we're going to celebrate a little bit because it's our 20th year anniversary. And uh, Yeah, uh, just one more thing about. before I bring yeah. up the anniversary. I know one of the things we've talked about a lot is uh, the prevalence and the increasing prevalence of forward head posture and how Str that is really Str a precursor to a lot of these um, yeah. symptoms that show up with yep. Parkinson's and dystonia. And so yep. we all, I mean, we all either have it or we're working yep. with people that Absolutely. have forward head posture. And yep. so, I mean, just yep. consider how many athletes, patients, clients yeah. you have that have that alone, and you're probably going to start to see some of these pre-Parkinson's or pre-dystonia-like symptoms um, popping up um, uh, before your eyes. Hand and arm and foot and leg uh, application and appreciation for these patients will be extremely highly regarded by all these speakers, so keep that in mind. It's a movement symposium. And as Ron mentioned, it's our 20th anniversary, so yeah. we are throwing a celebration um, and dinner on Friday evening after the symposium. So the symposium is Thursday and Friday, and we hope that um, everyone can stick around Friday evening. And if there's some people that are local that maybe can't attend the symposium, that they can come join us as well for the celebration. But we will have dinner, live music, entertainment, interaction um, mm -hmm. that's going to carry over from our symposium into our celebration. Yeah. Um, and so we're really looking forward to that. So we really hope that um, 
you guys will all be able to join us because we are celebrating you and not just us. So we would well love said. to have as many well, people here as possible. Well said. Well but if said. you have any questions about the upcoming symposium, feel free to reach out to us and we hope to see many of you there. Thank you very much. Thanks.